Panasonic has just released the G100, which is said to be a vlogger camera. I think it's a little bit late for April Fools, but this looks like a really bad joke to me. And the sad part about this is that it actually isn't. It's no joke. But the absence of both IBIS and face detection autofocus indicates that Panasonic does not understand the market at all. Or maybe they just don't care and do it their own way. I'll try to sum everything up for you so that after watching this video, you can make an educated decision on whether this is the right camera for you or not. My name is Valentin Kusenko. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to get notifications for new videos every single week. A lot of you guys probably don't even know this, but interaction is one of the most important factors for YouTube growth, and I highly appreciate your support. Now, the specs on paper don't look that bad actually. The G100 has a micro four thirds sized sensor with 20.3 megapixels. It's an interchangeable lens camera, which means that you can use any micro four thirds lens on it. Vlog L picture profile is pre-installed on the G100, which makes absolutely no sense to me. And once again, looks like a bad joke because everyone, including myself, had to pay for this on the GH5. Let's not forget that the G100 is a vlogging camera. Why would they include Vlog L here in the first place? It makes no sense to use Vlog L in a camera that can only shoot 8-bit video. And if I remember correctly, even Panasonic recommends staying away from 8-bit Vlog L recordings on the GH5 because of banding and other artifacts. Well, anyways, using that picture profile, they claim that the camera is able of capturing 12 stops of dynamic range, which, if correct, is comparable to the GH5 that is a lot more expensive. As I said, the G100 has no internal 10-bit recording option, so there's no hybrid log gamma picture profile in camera, which I'm personally a big fan of on my GH5. This is also the picture profile I'm using to shoot this video right now. And if you're interested in how I color grade my videos, you can watch my video following that link right here in the info cards. The G100 allows you to record videos using different aspect ratios in UHD resolution at a maximum of 30 frames and 100 megabits per second bitrate, which in all honesty is fairly low for that resolution. Full HD 60p is also available at 28 megabits per second and it looks like you can record slow motion at up to 120 frames per second using their VFR technology. Just looking at these numbers, compression will probably be a lot worse compared to the GH5, which again is a much more expensive camera though. To bring it into perspective, the GH5 records UHD videos at 150 megabits per second IPB or 400 megabits per second all I, and Full HD at 100 megabits per second IPB or 200 megabits per second all I. Having more bitrate to work with helps a lot, especially when color grading the image because it will introduce less compression artifacts. Most vloggers only really need a standard or natural picture profile though for a fast delivery without any fancy color correction. And if you're not going to heavily color grade your G100 footage, this shouldn't be a problem anyway. Panasonic colors look pretty nice straight out of camera on the natural picture profile in my opinion, and if you want to save a step in post, you can just use that for your videos. The G100 has a 3.5mm microphone jack and a hot shoe mount, which means that you can attach an external microphone to capture clear audio. It looks like this is not necessarily needed though, as they have incorporated Ozo Audio by Nokia, which does a decent job at cancelling unwanted noise out. If you're just doing a casual vlog, this should be enough in most used scenarios. The built-in microphones can be set up in different ways to focus on your voice only or record surround sound. This is especially great if you're talking from behind the camera and your external microphone is pointing away from you. In that case, your voice would usually sound a little muffled. This honestly isn't a bad idea, but the audio quality still sounds really thin compared to an external microphone. So in the end, it's probably wasted space in camera because everyone uses an external microphone that sounds a lot better anyways. The camera comes with 5-axis hybrid IS in Full HD and 4-axis hybrid IS in 4K, which means that it does not include any in-body image stabilization, but relies on optical stabilization in the lens and electronic image stabilization in camera instead. Now, why would you remove IBIS in a camera that is targeted at vloggers? The results can look quite decent if you're trying to hold the camera as still as possible. If you introduce any type of movement though, prepare for havoc. Okay, so here we are on stabilization mode high, and we're getting pretty close to a normal lens at this point. I'm, it's basically unusable for vlogging at this point. 
In that case, having IBIS would definitely be a lot better. Other Panasonic cameras like the GH5 or G9 have one of the best in-body image stabilization systems on the market. So I really don't get why they didn't implement this feature to separate themselves from other camera alternatives like the Sony ZV-1 for example, which although I'm a big Panasonic fan, looks like a lot better camera for almost the same price. Also, electronic image stabilization adds another crop to the image on the G100, which makes the camera almost useless for vlogging. Unlike the Sony ZV-1, the G100 has no face detection autofocus. And no, I'm not talking about face detection autofocus, which is definitely included, but it comes with a contrast AF system instead that uses DFD technology and a software algorithm to track movement. Systems like these heavily rely on processing power and are therefore often not on par with face detection autofocus. I created a video on autofocus performance comparing different lenses on the GH5. Although it sometimes works pretty well, I wouldn't consider using it in a critical environment. I mean, I get it. Face detection autofocus can also introduce issues like banding or artifacts, but this is still better than having an autofocus image or constant focus wobble all the time. The entire time that we've been on YouTube, we've been using Panasonic Lumix cameras. Right now we use the GH5 for everything. There's been so many times we've filmed a video and then gone back to watch it later and realized it wasn't focused on our faces halfway through and we had to refilm. Wait. Did they just admit they had to reshoot videos because their face wasn't in focus? Although their face was inside that little square all the time, well, welcome to Panasonic's face tracking autofocus. And you can really see very distracting wandering of the focus back and forth, especially in some of the 4K footage, which looks even more jarring because it's sharper. Although the square recognizes the face most of the time, the focus can't keep up with it and thus often leads to autofocus images for whatever reason. The same thing happens on the GH5 and it looks like they were not able to fix the issue on the G100. It got a lot better with firmware updates on the GH5 though, and who knows? If they find a way to allocate enough processing power to the focusing, this might actually be a viable option besides face detection autofocus with the benefit of no banding and other artifacts in the future. Yes, the G100 has an articulating screen, which is great, but why would you need that EVF bump in the center of the camera? Without that, the camera could definitely be a little smaller, which would be a lot more useful for vlogging. But if you're into photography, you might actually like that, so that's just my personal opinion here. You can also buy an additional small tripod that acts like a remote control for the camera. Once again, they're using technology from the past though, and I really wish it was USB-C so that we could also use it with our other Lumix cameras. But Panasonic really likes to introduce as many different USB options in their cameras as possible for, again, whatever reason. The idea is not bad though, and I wish we had more remote control options for other Lumix cameras as well. But since we can always just use the app to control most of the settings remotely, I can still live with that. Although, I'd really like to get rid of this thing right here. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of the Lumix GH5 and the Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm f1.7, but that doesn't mean that I like everything that Panasonic creates. Sometimes I have the feeling that they really listen to their customers and do their best to implement features people truly want. The GH5 is a great example for that. It was a great update compared to the GH4 and they added tons of features people wished for. This time, I must honestly say, I don't feel like Panasonic has put enough thought into the camera. Although it is a little bit cheaper than the ZV-1 vlogging camera by Sony and even has a bigger sensor, I feel like the ZV-1 produces a better image, especially in 4K. The audio straight out of the G100 sounds okay and does a fairly good job at canceling out noise. And I also like that it has an interchangeable lens mount so that I can use all my other Micro Four Thirds lenses on the camera. But the absence of IBIS and face detection autofocus is positioning that camera in a really awkward position. Contrast autofocus and electronic image stabilization is just not on par, and the latter looks absolutely horrible because of the crop. And these are the reasons why I can't really recommend buying this camera. Although the Sony ZV-1 is a lot better than the Lumix G100 in my opinion, it still isn't the perfect vlogging camera either. There is no such thing as a perfect camera. Every single camera I have seen so far was crippled in one way or another. But depending on your personal use case, one camera might be a perfect fit for you. I got really used to the GH5 that I'm 
using to film this right now and don't want to miss out on its features. But sometimes I wish it had better autofocus, better low light performance, or even internal ND filters to make my life even a little easier. It's been quite a while since they've released the GH5 and who knows, maybe the GH6 is just around the corner and I'd really love to see these features in the GH6. Very soon, Canon will announce the EOS R5 and Sony will likely continue with the A7S III. If you're as excited about this as I am and want another video with my opinion on both or even other cameras, please let me know in the comments below. I really hope that video was helpful for you. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.